Welcome everyone to the first in a series of tutorial videos related to the business simulation game Capitalism Lab. So in this first video, we're going to be taking a look at really the most basic part of the game that you're going to get started with, and that is the retail store. Now let's start off by zooming out a little bit, and I've just started a brand new game, and I have the game on pause right now, because generally one of the first steps you're going to take in the game is to create a retail store. Now the purpose of this tutorial is to show you a little bit behind how I play the game. And just as in real life, there are many different ways to run a business. So I'm not going to pretend that my way is the best or only way to play the game. There are many different ways to succeed in business. There are many different ways to succeed in the game. I'm going to show you generally how I think of the game and how I try to progress in the game, starting with the retail store aspect. So. Again, one of the first things you're probably going to want to do in a brand new game of Capitalism Lab is create a retail store. That's how we're going to get revenue. We'll talk about some of the other aspects of the product chain in other videos. So let's start out. The first thing we need to think about is, well, where are we going to put our retail store? If we sort of move around the map a little bit, you can see that we've got a lot of area. There's a lot of residential. There's a lot of commercial and there are some schools around and we'll see as we uh, fly around the different aspects you can see there's sort of a carnival fair atmosphere over here but a lot of residential so what we're going to do is we're going to start out by opening up a couple of the tabs we're going to open up our mini map and we're going to open up our uh, quick keys to the top left and let's start with the hammer the build menu and we're going to click on retail store now, I will start by letting you know that in the setup of the game, I have simplified things by going simply with one type of retail store. We're going to keep things simple, and we're going to go with just a department store. And what that means is we can sell anything we want in this department store. There are no specialty stores, such as a grocery store, a jewelry store, electronic store, and so on. We're going to deal with simple department stores, and you can see it's going to cost us a million dollars to build, and then it's going to cost us a hundred grand per month just to maintain regardless of what we're selling. Those are our base costs. Then we're also going to have land cost in there as well. So let's start by clicking on department store. And you can see in the top left hand corner, there is a blue rectangle. The most important information in here is the customer traffic index. You can see right now it is a 12 and that will change as I move around the map to different areas. Okay, the higher the number, the better. Essentially, think of this as foot traffic. The higher this number, the more people that are either driving by or walking by your storefront on a daily basis. You can see here we're at 21, which is better than it is out here, which is at 12 or even 15 in some cases. You can also notice that the customer traffic index is affected by what is currently in uh, the area. In this case, we could get a customer traffic index of 21, which is much better than, you know, just a couple of blocks over where it is 12, but it affects the value of the land. In this case, there's something already on the land, and it lets us know that we're going to have to purchase that as well in order to build our store. So let's take a quick look at a level 12 index, and we can see here that the land cost is going to be about 9.1 million. That's going to get us a 12 index. There's nothing currently on this land, so we don't have to demolish anything in order to start building. So we're going to keep in mind that 9.1 million. Now, if I move much closer to downtown, I'm going to get some higher numbers. Okay, there's a 39. But you can see here the land cost is almost double. It's 16 and a half million dollars now. So what you have to determine is, is the increased land cost worth it to you to build? For the purposes of this video, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner that we have $100 million in cash. So it's not a huge deal to us right now to shell out this kind of money. But if you're starting with much less money, then a better idea might be to save some money and build one on more of the outskirts of the town to get you started. And then as you have more and more profit, your company gets bigger, then you can start to want to take over some of the more centralized area of the city. Here is a customer index of 21, and it's going to cost us 13.3. Okay, so not bad. You can also see that the land is occupied. 
which is pretty obvious here. As we mouse over, you can see it's residential area right now, and that'll cost us 1.2, in this case, 1.1 here, and so on. So for the purposes of the video, I am going to purchase this land that is currently unoccupied. So we're gonna pay 9.7 million here. Again, not that this is necessarily the best place for it, but we're gonna choose an area to keep things simple. So now we bring up our first look at the department store interface. Now there's a whole lot going on here and we're gonna to try to unwrap this one level at a time. Again, there are many ways to do this as I've mentioned already. This is how I approach it. First things first, I look at training. Training, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to maximum. Okay, we'll get to see how this will affect things a little bit later on, but essentially I put this to maximum on every new building that I create, and that definitely goes for department stores. I max it out and then move on. Okay, that's gonna help us over time, not necessarily so much at the very beginning, but as time goes on, it will help with our profitability. So the first thing we need to look at is we've got nine squares on our grid. And we can use these nine squares really any way we like. There are a few basics that we're going to need to keep in mind, uh, a few basic areas that we're going to need. So let's start out by, it says double click here to add a functional unit. So let's do that. And you get, see, we've got some options. We can go advertising, inventory, private labeling, purchasing, sales, and then of course, leave it blank. And then each of these has a different setup cost. Now we're going to need at least one purchasing and one sales if we're going to sell anything. Essentially the purchasing unit will purchase the item that we're looking to sell and then the sales unit will stock that and then handle all of the sales. Private labeling, we're not gonna get into. That is, if you want to purchase a product from a competitor and you wanna change it to your brand, that's where you would do that. Okay, but we're not gonna get into that. We're not gonna use that. Okay, then you have an inventory function. Inventory functions come into play, uh, particularly if you are using options within the game setup that will have uh, different scenarios that will play out to disrupt your supply chains, disrupt maybe the resources that you can get and when you can get them. Inventory can be helpful in those cases because it will enable you to hold a great deal more products on hand so that you don't have to worry about interruptions that happen. Okay, for our purposes, we're gonna handle inventory in another building and not in our department store, so we're gonna skip over that. So the other option that we might be looking at other than purchasing and sales would be advertising, and once again, we're gonna handle advertising for the most part outside of our department sales. Okay, so let's start off with a couple of ways of doing this. We could select purchasing directly from here, and then we could set up sales as well, but we've also got a, an option in the top left-hand corner where we can click here and add a product. Okay, and we've got some options here. Really the one you wanna be concerned with is, or the ones you wanna be concerned with is the products and the suppliers. Okay, the products will, if there's a certain product that you know you want to sell, above all else, this is what I want to sell. If you just wanna sell beds, okay, I know I wanna sell beds, I just don't know who I'm gonna buy them from yet, we can select bed and you can see there are no suppliers right now. So if we're gonna sell beds, we're gonna to have to make them. Okay, so let's go back to all products. In this case, I would suggest, particularly at the very beginning of the game, that you not select a product that you want to sell. Instead, come over to a supplier and we're gonna select seaports. Okay, and you might say, okay, why would you select seaports? Well, at the beginning of the game, we're not gonna be a supplier. Okay, this is our company. We're not making anything right now. We don't have any buildings at all other than our retail store, so we can't supply any products to our store. And we don't want to purchase from one of our competitors right now because in all likelihood, any products that they're making, they're selling on their own. So instead, we're going to deal with directly the seaports, which is imported goods that we're then going to be able to put into our store and sell them at whatever price and quantity that we see fit. All right, so now we see that there is a long list of things that we can sell, all right? There's several products that we can deal with. Do we want to maybe go with cola? Do we want to go with bread, watches, and so on? Because we only have 
one type of department store instead of specialty stores. We don't have to particularly worry about which type of store we build. We can sell anything in this particular store. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start with cola since that's an easy one. All right, we're going to select it on the screen and then select here. And you can see that by default, it is going to put a purchasing unit and a sales unit. And then these two are linked. Now, if I, I can unlink those, and you can see we've got corner links that are possible, vertical links, horizontal links, all sorts of things that we can do. You can get very uh, detailed with your orientations and your layouts here. All right. So for right now, we're going to leave this as is. Okay, you can see that we've got a purchase unit. We know who the supplier is. We click here. We can see it's coming from the seaports. Okay, we already knew that, but it's this information is going to be here for in the future when you have many more stores and many more buildings to deal with. This will be an easy way for you to know where is it that I'm purchasing this particular product. Okay, we can also change the link to a new supplier if we want to, let's say later on in the game, if we decide to make Cola on our own, we can come back in and stop getting the merchandise from the seaport and change the supplier to be our own manufacturing. Okay, for now, again, we're gonna leave this as is and we're already linked in to a sales unit. And you notice that there is a one in the top right-hand corner of each of these units. That is the training. Okay, on each unit, you will see that there will at the start be some workers that will show up in red. This means that they are untrained. Okay, as the training increases, these will move into blue. So as time goes on, one will turn blue, then the second, the third, and then the fourth will turn blue. And then finally, this will increase our training to two and we'll start back all over again with red, and then these will turn blue again. We'll move up to three, four, and so on, all the way up through nine. Nine is the maximum level. Okay, so we're starting off at one, which means that we have completely untrained staff, but we've already seen earlier that we've maxed out our training so that as fast as possible, these will turn blue and our units will increase. Now that's gonna help us long-term to be able to purchase more, to sell more, to warehouse more, whatever the case may be, and increase our profitability long term. Okay, if we're dealing with factories, then our better trained staff leads to a better product, better quality. So you get the idea. So we're going to start out with a single purchase unit and a single sales unit, and we're dealing with a single product of cola. All right, let's go ahead and let's add another one. Let's go back to bread, and we're going to select it. All right, you can see how it is sort of using the available slots. Okay, now we're purchasing bread. We know who the supplier is. and We've already linked it to the seaport. We're good there. And then, of course, you've got your sales unit. So we can do this for any number of different units. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to turn on the time. I'm going to put it on five, which is the maximum speed, just for a few moments so we can sort of see how this plays out and get some more information. All right, I'm going to press five on the keyboard. Four, and you can see time passing. All right, so that a lot of time passed in a very short amount of time, but that's what we want because we want to have some information that we can now see, some data that we can get our hands on and see how we're doing. All right, let's click on the cola. All right, the color of our firm, our company, is this green. So you can see the piece of the pie that we have. Right now, the rest of it is white, and that means to us that we have none of our competitors are in this same space. None of our competitors are selling cola except for us. All right, all of the rest of these sales are coming from local competition. Okay, you'll have two types of competition to be concerned with. You'll have your direct competition. And if we look at the information center, you can see a list here. here here's all of our competition. We're listed at the top, and then here's all of our competitors. And you can also see their colors as we go along, okay? If we come back to our department store, you can see none of them show up here, so we're in good shape. We do not have any direct competition. Particularly at the beginning of a game, it's good not to be in direct competition simply because it makes it much easier for you to get a foothold into the market. Okay, also, it gives us some basic information. Okay, it gives us the cost plus the freight. It gives us the price that we're currently selling 
the cola. Okay, and then that information works its way down into the bottom part or section two of our store. Okay, we can see our profit, which is currently right at 500,000. We can see the revenue, which is 870,000. So we're making a pretty good profit here, better than a 50% profit. Also, you can see the quantity. How much color are we selling? And we're selling 870,000. And you can see we haven't been going that long into game time. So you can see there's a, a huge increase and it's starting to level out a little bit over time. But you can see 870,000 represents this portion of the demand of the market, which means there is a huge ability for us to sell much more cola than we currently are. However, that will depend on how much supply there is available. Remember, we're getting this currently from the seaport. So we're importing all of our product. Uh, in the future, we may be able to get more of that, or we may have to make it ourselves if we're going to increase that. But it does show that there is a huge, huge amount that is still here for demand. And you can see at the bottom, there is a certain amount of demand and the supply is nowhere near meeting that demand. Okay, now let's move over to our bread and you can see instantly, we've got some competition. There's a little yellow, there's some dark green there. All right, so we've got some competition in this space. So you can see how much of the market is still available if you uh, look at additional supply rather than taking market share from our competitors. All right, so this gives us a good dynamic. We have cola, which doesn't have any competition, and we have bread, which has two competitors right now in addition to the local businesses. All right, so let's come back over to the cola. If we look at our purchase and sales unit for the cola, you can see we're up to a level three. But there's another piece of information which is vital here that we haven't taken a look at just yet, and that is the utilization. You can see that currently for the amount of cola that we are purchasing and then selling, we are only utilizing approximately half of the capability of this purchasing unit. Now, I wonder why that is, because if you notice, we're definitely not maxing out on the amount of cola that can be sold. So there must be another piece to this puzzle. And if we look, there is. And you notice when we click over to the sales department, you can see it. We're at 94% right now. And these numbers will fluctuate as time goes on. But we're at 94%. Essentially, we're all but maxing out our sales capability. So in this particular case, our purchasing unit is capable of basically twice the amount as our sales unit is capable of. So in this case, we've already looked at our graph and we've seen, okay, we're not meeting the full market demand here and we don't even have any competition to worry about. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put in another sales unit. Okay, and that will give us our two to one ratio that we see through our utilization. We can't sell anymore with this particular unit because we basically are at 100% or very close to it. So if I'm going to sell any more and take advantage of this additional market share that is available, I'm going to have to bring in another sales unit. And because of the way things are laid out, I'm going to put my sales unit here. Okay, we're going to double click on the empty unit, click on sales, then OK. And now I'm going to connect these vertically. So now I've got one purchase unit and it's connected to two sales units. All right, now if we come back out and let's go ahead and put this back on the time of five right now, just for a short amount of time, okay? And that should be enough. Now I've paused the game again and we're gonna come back in and look. Automatically you can see purchasing unit is now a level four as this sales unit is level four. This sales, sales unit is only a level two, okay? So they're still working on it. Now let's come back into our purchasing. You can see utilization is now up to 82% from just a little over 50 to now 82%. And again, this will continue to go up most likely. In fact, let's just go ahead and let time run by a little bit more. And you can see, all right, now it looks like things are starting. You can see the graph has been steadily increasing, but now it's starting to level off just a little bit. Okay, let's come back into our purchasing unit. Now a level seven. And you can see we're at 75. So we were at 82, now we're at 75. 
So now you get a good idea of the utilization here. Let's go back over to sales. We're at 80%. Now we're at 94% here. All right, so not bad. That's, those utilizations are much better. The last thing you want to do is leave efficiency on the table by having very low utilization. And if you look over to bread, the same thing is happening. We're only utilizing half of our possibilities with the purchasing department. But yet the sales department is basically full, fully utilized. All right, let's go back over to our cola for a moment. And now you can see that we have a much larger percentage of the market. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, in fact, you can see we're still at 75% utilization. And we're not quite 100% utilization for these two. We might could chance putting another sales unit in here. But I think that would hurt our efficiency more than it would really help anything. So I'm going to leave this two to one ratio two sales units to one purchase unit. Now let's come back over to bread and let's see what we've got here. All right, you can see in bread, wow, the yellow company has nearly half of the market and you can see that now we have nearly half of the market. Okay, so there's, if we're going to gain a substantial additional percentage of the market, because you can see there's not much white remaining here, we're gonna have to take market share away from our competitor. Okay, so there's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, and the, we're going to go a very straightforward way, and that is we're going to take our first look at price. Now, I mentioned it earlier as we were going through our setup. I mentioned that it showed us our price, but I really didn't go into any more depth than that. And that's because I wanted to wait a little bit longer to see how things shaped out so that we could come back to that. All right, so we're back on our cola. You can see we're selling for a price of a dollar. And that has us, we're probably at what, about two thirds, you'd say, on the market share there. But let's come back down and let's take our first look at the rating. Okay, you can see we have an overall rating of 25 and the city has an overall rating of 14. Now, what do those numbers mean? Well, in essence, what we want to do to keep this very simple is we want to keep our rating higher than our competition. In this case, the only competition is local. So they're at 14 and we are nearly double that at 25. Now the rating is made up of a combination of factors. Okay, brand and quality will increase as those two numbers increase, your overall rating will increase. But as we increase our price, our overall rating comes down. Okay, so keep that in mind. Of the three factors listed here, we want to always be working to increase our brand increase our quality as those two things will always work to increase our overall rating, but price, as we increase our price, that will bring our rating back down. So it's the, it is the combination of these three, which will get us to where we want to be. Now, in this case, we have a large difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from a dollar, let's go to, let's say a dollar five. Okay. I've raised my price. I'm going to click confirm. Now, nothing changes immediately because again, the game is paused. All right, so what that's going to do is because I've raised my price, that's going to bring our rating down closer to 14. How close? Don't know. We're going to have to find out. Now let's come over to the bread and let's see what we've got. We've got a 42 versus a 36, much closer. So we don't have very much wiggle room here and we're going to have to decide essentially how we want to do this. Okay, we already know we're only using half of our utilization on purchasing, so we can purchase more bread but we can't sell anymore with our current sales unit because they're essentially maxed out at 100% utilization. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add another sales unit and I am going to now put a diagonal. There we go. Now these are connected diagonally, telling me that the purchasing of bread now connects to this sales unit instead of so this sales unit is going to be dealing with bread and not have anything to do with the cola, since you can see there are no connections to the cola. Okay, now we are going to take one more look at our price. And for now, I'm going to increase it, but just ever so slightly. All right, I'm just going to go up one tick and let's see what that does. So I've clicked confirm. So we go from 
42 and 36, which again is pretty close. And now we're going to go 25 to 14, but we're going to see what this increased price does. I'm going to put back on five on the time scale. And now I've once again paused it so that we can take another look. All right, now you can see we're a little bit closer. It's 22 to 13, but you can see it hasn't really hurt us. Okay, we have no competition. Our market share may have actually increased a little bit. If we take a look at our profit, you can see it's gone up a little bit. Okay, revenue again has gone up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to further increase this a little bit more. Okay, let's go from 105 to 109. Confirm that. Let's take a look at what's happened with bread. Oh, wow. You can see now we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, we have a much larger piece of the pie now. We are starting to take market share from our competition. You can really see where our increased sales have come into play. You can see this spike here. That is very nice spike in quantity from where our new sales unit is taking uh, advantage of the new capabilities of the purchasing unit. Now we're at about 70% on the purchasing unit. And you can see that's much closer to what we were getting from the purchasing unit from our COLA. So the two to one ratio is in general a very good ratio to think about sales units to purchasing units. Now you'll notice we haven't used any of the other units. We haven't used advertising or inventory or private labeling to this point, and yet we're still doing pretty good. But if we take a look at the COLA, you can see our brand is still at zero. We're not really doing any marketing. This will slowly improve over time on its own, but very, very slowly. And, and essentially you shouldn't count on getting any effect from that. So what do we do? Okay, if we want to increase this number, we're gonna simply have to improve um, our advertising. But I choose not to do the advertising here. I choose to essentially focus on that in a different way, and we'll look at that in a future video. So for now, hopefully this has given you a much better idea of how to run a retail store. Um, I tried to be as detailed as I possibly could. Again, there are more things you can do, more layouts you can see. We've got room for another product in here. We've got room for another. We've got room for another purchasing unit and we've got room for a couple of more sales units. So now, and let's go ahead and connect those. But the question is, what are we going to sell? Well, let's take a look. And just because it's the first thing I notice, we're going to sell cakes. All right, not bad at all. So now we're going to sell cakes. We simply turn on the time. All right, now we'll pause it one more time. We'll come over to the cakes. You can see 40 to 33. Oh, but wait a minute. We've got a price agreement. This is the last thing that I want to point out when we're talking about department stores. Okay, this is why you have to pay attention to where you're getting the products. Okay, the first two products, where did we get those? Well, we got those from the seaport. And you can see here, if we click on the purchasing tab for a particular product, the supplier, we can see seaports. Same thing with the bread. Let's click on the purchasing tab for the bread, supplier, seaports. Now, if we per click on the purchasing tab for the cakes, supplier, wait a minute, that's Victory Group. That's one of our competitors. So now you notice that, wait a minute, we can't do everything that we could before. We can't set a price here. And the reason we can't set a price is because there's a price agreement. And if you let the tool uh, tip pop up, then you'll see that the reason why we can't set the price is because this is a competitor's product that they are selling in their own retail stores. And because of that, they're not going to sell us a bunch of product and then let us undercut them on price. So they mandate the price that we're allowed to sell this for. And for that reason, I do not advise selling products made by your competitors on the retail side. Now, if this is a product that they're making but not selling in, in the retail environment, then you're fine. But in this case, you can see they definitely have a presence in the retail environment and they have a huge percentage of the market share. In fact, it looks a lot like what our graph does 
for cola. So be very careful when you're choosing products that you really pay close attention to your suppliers. Okay, and that is why whenever you look at suppliers, I always recommend that you look at either making your own products or simply purchasing from the seaports because if you purchase from the seaports, you know you'll be able to control the price. Now, it doesn't mean you're the only person that is selling. You might very easily have competitors, just as a case with canned soup. You can see one of our competitors is already selling this on the market. So we know automatically we're going to have competition for this product. So again, these are the ways that I look at the retail store environment and the way I try to set them up and the way I look at them for the long term, particularly with aspects to the training as well as setting up the pricing. These are things you're going to have to look at over and over as time goes on. Now, as time, the longer you sell these products, the more stable this would generally become unless there is a new competitor that jumps into the market. But these are things that you're going to have to take a look at from time to time. You're going to simply want to go to your retail store, click there, click on your products, and take a quick glance at what your market share is. Are you gaining or losing market share? Take a look at your profit, those types of things. If you start to see that you're losing profit, that's probably going to mean that your ratings have changed in relationship and you're going to need to make some price adjustments or maybe increase your advertising or increase the quality. All of those things really come into play. This is a very deep and complex game. But once you get the hang of the fundamentals, particularly for the department store, it's really not that difficult. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we're going to have more additional videos for Capitalism Lab.